Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the District of Muskoka World GIS Day presentation of the new Muskoka GeoHub web mapping site. We are doing something brand new for the first time ever here, folks. So we are going to wait for a few more minutes for some people to join us. We're anticipating about 140 people to um, join us on a first time ever uh, uh, webinar to showcase our new, new site. Um, what you two, what, what you people can do for us is participate in our day. And by doing that, you can um, click on the uh, question and A, Q and A tab at the bottom of your screen. That's the questions and answers. If anything comes up during your uh, watching of our demonstration, you can certainly add your question to that box. Um, Stu Paul, our GIS project coordinator, who is also on this line, will be happy to answer your questions either by typing out the answer to, the, to your question in the Q&A box, or we could leave it to the end of the meeting and we could discuss it in more detail. Um, maybe I'll stop right there and just say that um, Stu Paul has done a fantastic job on this site. He has done most of the heavy living, lifting to be able to provide this to you. And I am sure you will be surprised and uh, maybe even amazed a little bit at the quality and detail of the information we're about to show you on a free public web mapping site. So we want to thank Stu for that. <clears throat> you guys can also participate by checking on the, um, the, the chat box. You can add your comments in the chat box and you can add your questions to the Q&A box, okay? So I am going to get started and point our screen to the new Muskoka GeoHub web mapping site. And it looks like this. <clears throat> I'm going to start with the first one on the list. There's many, many apps that we're going to go through here in a second or in the next few minutes. <clears throat> but I'm going to start with the air photos of Muskoka. <clears throat> this is the first one, but I also want to show you how to navigate the site. Um, you can zoom in by scrolling your mouse wheel forward. And to zoom out, you can move your mouse out. All of the apps have these plus arrows or minus arrows to zoom in and out as well. To um, zoom in and you wanna go in a certain place, just point your cursor in the area you're interested in. Zooming in will take you to the area that you are trying to find. To move the map, click your mouse, hold, and you could drag left, right, up, or down to navigate to exactly where you're trying to look at. <clears throat> One of the other improvements that the new web hub provides is a very detailed ability to search and find information. So on every map, look for one of these little uh, bars to put an address in and click and find. It's pretty quick, pretty fast, and you can navigate exactly where you're trying to find. So for this air photo of Muskoka map, we have historical air photos. All you need to do to see it is click the next year and it automatically pops up going back to 1987, 19 even 77, and all the way back to 1969. And you could certainly have some fun to see the difference between 1969 and the latest and greatest version of 2018. If you're interested in acquiring a, a version of this map for your own purposes, you could click on this acquiring digital air photos tab. Just click on a box, highlight, right click, copy, and read these instructions down here. You could send us an email by clicking this, pasting that tile, and then sending it to us, we could deal with that uh, at another time. Quick, easy, fast, simple. The next map I wanna show you <clears throat> is the topography crown land map. It has a lot of information that is available on most base maps. So I thought it'd be a good example of where, what, what, what else you could see on most maps. But this is an interactive web mapping site. And take a look at the legend on the right. And every time I zoom in, 
more information will become available in the legend as more information pops up on the screen. Now we have roads, properties, buildings, right down to the civic address 911 number at the very end. I think <laughs> there may be a lot of people doing this right now. Um, so there's a lot of data. As you zoom in, more information becomes available on the legend. This is also interactive by allowing you to turn layers on and off. By going to the layer list, you could uncheck certain layers, turn them on, turn them off. And you could even expand the individual lists in each box. And if you are not interested in seeing the contour lines, for example, you could uncheck that and it becomes off your box, off the map. So it's interactive in a couple different ways. You can also add air photos to every map. By clicking in the base map gallery, you have the same air photos that I showed you in the first map. All you need to do is to click it and there they are. And you could go back in time. This is a significant increase or improvement from the original maps, um, allowing for you to add air photos to any map on top of any layer. The next map I wanna show you is probably one of the most unique maps that you will find anywhere. This is our brand new floodline mapping layer that shows the extent of the floodlines or potential floodlines and LIDAR based ground elevation. The search box allows you to search on many different things, including specific lakes. Think. <laughs> the first search maybe is a little slower than normal. I'm going to find it anyway by panning, zooming, and finding the lake I'm interested in. Yes, we may have 250 people all trying to do this at exactly the same time. So here we are. I found the area I'm looking for. It's showing me the static flood lines. I could click on this, and, and this is big. It, looking at a pretty map is one thing, but acquiring individual or, or detailed data is a completely different thing. By clicking on anything, you'll retrieve information about that, that particular location. In this case, we've got extensive amount of information on a single property. I'm gonna go back. I could click on that, uh, individual information on every property, but I also have this option here of looking at the next feature. By clicking that, it tells me that the ground elevation at this particular point is 285 meters above sea level. I could click that again, and it tells me the actual level elevation of the flood in this area of 286.68, which tells me, I think, without being an expert, it's about 1.68 meters underwater in a worst case scenario. The other thing I wanted to show you is hyperlinks. Anything that has more information and blue, click it. We're gonna give you some more information that you wanna see. In this case, we're showing you the original flood line mapping that the consultant provided that you could look at and see very quickly. The other link, it'll take a while to open because it's quite large, but this will give you all of or the key map, uh, quite a bit of information on that as well. But at the top, we have other links. This link will take, us, take you to the District of Muskoka floodline mapping page. And this link is quite large. It'll give you all of the details about the actual technical report from the consultant on floodline mapping that you could see um, should you be interested in how these layers get generated and, and work. The other really cool thing, and I might say that a few times today, 
is you can add the air photos to this map, but this map has a special swipe tool, which allows you to see the ground and what it looks like from the air by swiping the information back and forth. That may be one of the most unique features that you will find in any location for a while. Now I know we have high school geography classes on the line and I thought this would be interesting for them. If I turn off my floodline mapping layers, take my swipe tool, what I think you'll be looking at here when it just refreshes here in a second is about 10,000 years worth of river meandering. Let's just make sure that works. So the air photo where the river is right now in the Big East and what it really looked like all these other years with all of these individual meandering lines. Um, Geography 101 folks, but there it is. You could have fun playing with this stuff. Now we know we got some planning consultants out there. Um, so I thought I would show you the development applications map. This map will show you the active subdivisions and condominium plans. And by searching or finding or simply zooming in, you'll be able to see each one of those applications. You could click on it and it will reveal information on that property, including the development application itself and the number of units. You could even search on individual applications and it'll find itself in the search box. and it'll take it to you when there isn't 250 people on it all at the same time. <laughs> what I wanted to show, maybe it won't get there, but again, air photos can be added to anything. But in this case, it's a solid fill that it's hard to see. So the special trick we have for that is to go to, there it is there, thank you, is to go to the layer list, and this is the development layer, but these three little dots give us more information. If I click that, I could add a transparency to this layer. I just convert this and you could see it magically going away without it being lost. So you could actually see through layers by changing the transparency. And that is available on all maps on all layers. going through this fairly quickly, but the next map I wanna show you is the zoning. We've got several zoning layers here. Here is the Township of Muskoka Lakes zoning map. <clears throat> okay, again, you could do a search, you could do a find, or you could zoom in and you could click on each one of these properties to get some valuable information about it. In this case, the Township of Muskoka Lakes has provided additional information regarding their zoning information. What we could do here is click the more information and it will come up with the actual permitted uses, uses for this particular zone. It will also provide you with some of the setback requirements and distances in order to be able to meet the conditions of this zone. I'm no planner, but that is helpful information, I think. It also provides the actual zoning bylaw exemption file, which allows people to see exactly what was permitted and what was allowed for that particular property when it was passed. We can do a search for a specific roll number. Copy and paste and it shows it there. Very quick, very fast, and again, information about zoning and about exemption bylaws are available at a few clicks. You can also search in the Township of Muskoka Lake zoning for a special exemption bylaw file. Boom, click, and found it. Okay. 
Some of the other features that are available on all the maps include some measuring options, uh, measuring tools. So we could click this measuring tool. We can select a distance in meters or feet, yards, and we could click the map and we could actually do a very detailed measurement of what that distance is. The other tools that are quite unique to this map are the drawing tools. I could add my own text, change the color, change the font size, and click. In addition, we can add a polygon or all these other types of symbols. But this allows us to even have a area and a perimeter to be included when we're adding my new house. And there it is. We can print this. We have new print templates that allow people to print a different file size file. We could even add the title. We could look at some of the advanced options, but <clears throat> really the print option, the default setting is pretty, pretty, works pretty well. And I just open that up. There's my map, there's my notes, there's my legend, and I could print, save, distribute, or share that. Pretty quick, pretty fast, pretty cool. The other thing that I wanted to point out about this map, and I could clear all of these with a click of a clear. At the top, we have links to the Township of Muskoka Lakes website and to the Township of Muskoka Lakes full zoning bylaw <clears throat> for more information regarding each one of those zones. We also have this tool. It's a query tool. And we are, what this allows you to do is do a quick search. And for those people who have lot and concession information, then you could open up the query tool to find the lot and concessions. Scroll down through all of these. I could click the township, geographic township. I could click the, the concession and the lot and apply. And it'll zoom, find, highlight that particular concession. I could click these three dots to remove the result and go back and you could do the same thing for roads or a particular zone. So there's a lot of functionality in the query tool. <clears throat> Another really exciting feature that we've never had before is this directions option box at the top. If you click this, it'll give you the directions to find a particular property. If I click the find the spot, it will, oh, it's not there. I'm going to switch maps. Okay. I'm going to go to the town of Huntsville map. Now, I'm going to get back to that. But the town of Huntsville map is special. The town of Huntsville map, zoning map, has the same zoning information that I showed you on, on all the other maps. If you click a property, it will reveal the property information and the zoning information, and it has the links to their bylaws, just like I showed you. The difference is this map is coming from the town of Huntsville's computers. The town of Huntsville manages this data. So the new Muskoka GeoHub is the first application in the district to share dynamic data services with all of our area municipalities. And in this particular case, we're working with the town of Huntsville to allow the Muskoka GeoHub to consume their zoning data that is created and published by the town of Huntsville. And the Muskoka GeoHub provides a platform for increasing data sharing capabilities that will increase efficiencies and accuracies of our common data resources. So that's a really cool feature that um, we're really excited to be able to provide 
and we'll be expanding that going forward. I'm going to try the directions app here again, and I click on a property or a location, and it's working. And then I could click another place, or I could type in where I'm going to start from if I'm a staff or if I'm um, a person who is looking for uh, directions to a particular uh, property, if I'm delivering or if I'm going to do a site visit. And it has created very quickly, very detailed uh, driving directions to this particular site. The advantage of this is it's going to be better than Google. It's a very similar to Google, but we're using our data that we have given to fire, police, and, and ambulance to find your property when 911 is called. So we're confident this information is going to be accurate and complete. The other thing that you could do with this is you could print this off or you could share it and you could share it to your phone or to any other device. And speaking of phones, all of this data can be viewed remotely on your cell phone or your tablet. And one of the other cool features that this has is this little tool at the top left. It's called My Location. When you're out on your phone, whether you're out on your tablet, click that and you don't have to search and find where you are. It'll automatically find you. <clears throat> I can't do that in my desktop computer, but that's something that you guys can try in the coming, coming days out in the field, looking at how the location tool works for you. Okay, moving on. A couple more really fun tools. And I gotta say, this isn't something that the professional GIS staff at the District of Muskoka play with every day, but it is fun. This is another unique map that is gonna be hard for you to find elsewhere. It's a 3D map with 3D buildings. I could zoom anywhere, I could do a search, but this little building, this, this toggle, to rotate in 3D is something that you could click, drag, hold, zoom, and pan to be able to see the actual elevation of that ground and the elevation of the buildings around it. It's going to take a little bit for you to figure that out, but students in the geography class, maybe you could spend your day playing with that in the next few days because that is kind of cool. Another very unique map, maybe uh, made in Muskoka only, is our shoreline videos. <clears throat> this is coming from a third party, but if you were out in one of these lakes, you could do a search, you could do a find, or you could just zoom in, click this link, or click the tap uh, and open the video. <laughs> It'll take you to a third party site. All you have to do is launch that, and you'll be able to see the shoreline video of major lakes and rivers in Muskoka from the water side perspective instead of from the lake side. Okay. I guess that reminds me, I'm going to search for an urban area. I'm going to go to downtown Bala. And another link I forgot to mention is this. If you click on a property in most urban areas, it will take you to this, where you could see the street view as opposed to what I just showed you on the water view. We use this quite regularly for our 911 civic addressing purposes. Okay, so I'm going through this fairly quickly. We're getting close to the end of what I planned on showing you, but there's a couple of other really interesting mapping applications that are part of our new Muskoka GeoHub. <clears throat> and they're called story maps. And we have a few of them published here, the Atlas, the Trails, the Muskoka Watershed Report Card and the Algae are all examples of report cards, or sorry, of story maps. I'm gonna launch the Muskoka Watershed Report Card. And it, this is full of information and maps. <clears throat> it 
There's detailed information here. Each one of these, you can open up and look at other resources. There's links and there's maps. Interactive web mapping, similar to what I just showed you before. You could click on this and get the information like we've done before. The algae mapping is one of our newest ones. And again, by scrolling down through this, a lot of details are available to you. It pops up um, very interactive. And again, it has a mapping component to it, but it's not really just a map. It's a lot more than just a map. So those students, again, um, I think one of the things that you guys could work on maybe would be looking at some story map functionality. <clears throat> and should you get something, we'd be happy to kind of work with you to get it posted on our website too, going forward. The last major thing that I wanted to share with you people today <clears throat> is our open data. Open data has been a big component of the GIS web mapping site in the past, and it continues to be doing that in the future. At the very bottom of the launch page, you can see these data, set, data sets. You could either search or you could click on each one of these individual categories. I'm gonna search for, I'm gonna click on the boundaries. And within here, I can see the administrative boundaries. I could click that and what this will allow you to do is to download this file and import it into your own GIS files. Or this API will allow you to copy and paste this service into your GIS programs to be able to access our data without downloading, <clears throat> without taking up server space. And should these layers change, this API file will allow you to see the most current version of our data live in your GIS files, which we think is a pretty cool thing. <clears throat> If I go back to our launch page, the other thing that you can do is to search for our pre-existing PDF maps. We've created these maps in the past. We've made them available for people to download. And you could do that now in this new site. By searching for a PDF, you could see this base map. <clears throat> you could see a preview version of it. And if that's what you want, you could actually download this or print it directly from this site. And this will take you back to our starting place of the Muskoka GeoHub site. So that is what I intended to show you. Um, I, I could say to you that we will continue to make improvements on this site. We've done an ama amazing amount of effort to bring it to this stage, but we're not done. We will be adding more data, more maps, more tools, and we will be allowing more data to be consumed as open data sites or sources um, in the future. And we'll be able to share more data between the area municipalities and the district on an ongoing basis. I guess my ask of you would be to use this, to play with it, to work with it. Tell us what you like, tell us what's missing, tell us what's out of date, and ask what we can do to make more improvements for you guys going forward. Because we know that this is not a static situation. It is fluid, changing every day. And we have a system that allows us to make those kind of changes. So that's the uh, end of my formal kind of conversation for you today. Um, Stu, could, we, um, at, could I ask you if there's any questions or comments that people have been asking that we can show or demonstrate today? Uh, yeah, sure. We got quite a few good questions, um, and I've been answering them as we've been going. Uh, I'd say that uh, one good question that might apply to everybody who's listening in would be, uh, we got a, a question from Terry Crew who said, when you add your house or any kind of graphic drawing to the Muskoka web map, is it saved, or sorry, to the GeoHub? I'm still saying the old name. But when, you're, when you add graphics to the GeoHub, are they actually saved onto the GeoHub? And it's a temporary graphic that's added for your session alone. So when you're done with your session um, and you shut down your browser, whatever graphics you've drawn, whether it's your house, 
or your driveway or, or an area in your backyard. Um, at that point, when, when you close down your browser, uh, those graphics are gone. They're not saved anywhere. Uh, agreed. <clears throat> but what you can do is to print this to a PDF file and rec recall it as a permanent file of something that you have added to the map. Okay, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, I, I guess if we have a, a minute, uh, another good question that we got was, um, was, was about the parcel fabric and the accuracy of the parcel fabric. So we get our parcel fabric from MPAC and uh, the Municipal um, Property Assessment Corporation. And the property boundaries are meant to be a rough generalization. So they're not survey accurate. So when you zoom in and you look at the parcel fabric, it's not gonna be exactly perfect. And there are some areas where we know it's off. So if you do notice that there are some areas in the parcel fabric is, is um, you know, going over the edge of your house, it looks like it's, it's because the parcel fabric is a generalization. So it's not, it's no reason to be concerned that the survey is actually cutting your house into and somebody else owns half of your property. Yes, that's correct. It's a, it's a, it's a schematic representation and not a legal survey. Okay, good. <clears throat> Anything else, Stu? Um, <clears throat> there's a question about getting ownership information. Um, unfortunately, that can't be provided because it is it is sensitive information, and um, we're not allowed to provide that. Uh, so for for that kind of information you would have to go to the land registry office or the, the municipal, the lower tier municipal town offices. Uh, there were, we did get a number of questions also about um, data downloads or consuming data in um, individuals GIS environments. And so to answer those questions for the time being, like Graham showed, we do have our data page where you can either download certain data sets or consume geo services. Um, and we're hoping to add to that over time. So uh, off the hop, we're, we're starting with the, 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 the bare bones, the basics that we have available under our open data license, but we are hoping to expand that over time. Yes. I'd say that those are the, you know, that's the, the general gist of the questions that we got, but uh, Okay. Yeah, we, we encourage more questions. If, if you do, uh, we have a contact link at the bottom of our GeoHub page, it goes to our GIS info um, email account. So please reach out to us at any time and we're happy to answer any questions that you have. So my last slide here is how do you find us? <clears throat> and you could find us by going to the District of Muskoka GIS page that will have a link to our new site at some point. Um, you could also do a search for Muskoka GeoHub. Now we're brand new as of like four hours ago, so it might not show up on Google, but it will get there. Or you could simply type into your Chrome browser. Chrome, I didn't mention this at the beginning, is the preferred browser. This will not work on Internet Explorer, but will work on most other uh, current versions of Internet browsers but you could simply type in map.muskoka.on.ca and it'll come up for you. And again, just to repeat what Stu said, if you have any questions, any comments, any thoughts or suggestions, please email us at gisinfo at muskoka.on.ca. <clears throat> so I wanna thank you all very much for participating with, our, with us today on our launch of the new Muskoka GeoHub web mapping site. My name is Graham Good, and on behalf of the hardworking GIS professionals, John, Stu, Sarah, Mike, and Ann, we thank you for participating in our webinar. Happy World GIS Day, happy World GIS Day, and stay safe. Thank you, and goodbye.